I just had an uh, email from Clement, who's in line at the COVID testing thing. So she'll get her when she can. Okay, as a pre preliminary matter, uh, this is Rob Benchley, permitted to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda for the Wisconsin Advisory Board, our president can hear me. <clears throat> when I call your name, please answer. Uh, Caroline Ellis. Oh, you're muted. I see you, but you're muted. Okay, I'll take that as it here. Mary Lathrop Will. Uh, Angus McLeod. Yeah. Thank you. And Clement may or may not join us. <clears throat> All right. Uh, sorry. Uh, good morning. This open meeting of the Wisconsin Advisory Board is being conducted remotely consistent with the Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth <clears throat> due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. <clears throat> the order, which you can find posted for the agenda materials of this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberations of this meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. <clears throat> this meeting will feature public comment. Uh, for this meeting, the Scott's Advisory Board is convening via video conference via the Zoom app as posted on the town's website identifying how the public may join. Please note this meeting is being recorded and that all attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and to take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. Public's encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless I, the chair, I, the chair notes otherwise. Now we're turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do so, permit me and cover some ground rules. I'll introduce each speaker on the agenda after they conclude the remarks. The chair will go down the line of members inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. Uh, please remember to speak clearly in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage a conversation with the other members, please do so through the chair. <clears throat> After members have spoken, the chair will afford public comment to those members of the public that have joined via the Zoom app. Members of the public who wish to speak must state their names and be acknowledged and speak to the chair. Each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by a roll call vote. All right. Uh, I'll take a motion to adopt the agenda. I will second that. Mary. Thank you. Uh, all in favor, uh, Caroline Ellis. All right, Angus. Aye. Thank you. And Rob votes yes too. Uh, so the first uh, item here is the Town of Nantucket for directional sign. Yes, so Mr. Chair, this was on your agenda last week. Uh, we didn't have the quorum, but I did receive comments. Um, the, I think that the HTC at the end of the day and staff wanted it to be back on your agenda because it was requested by the sign council. Yep. Um, so I'm gonna 
bring the that up for you all. So here you'll see the you know, you'll see the sign advisories um, or councils um, comments here, um, where they're asking for you all to take a look at this. So here's the proposal. I did receive comments, and I thank you for them from Mary and Angus um, last week via email. So thank you for that. I can. I have them written down. Um, it seems like everybody's in agreement, agreement that it would be better to have the sign on this side of the road, not in the triangle um, where the uh, bike path ends before you get into Main Street of Sconset. Like I said, where the intersection of Milestone and Main Street meet. Um, but this is the proposal. So move it across the, the street to the other side of the zebra crossing. Yeah, just like that. that yep, so it'd be over here. Yep. What do you what do we do about those hideous state highway signs? Like <laughs> that big green ugly uh, thing. Yeah. And the historical commission made comments about that when um, the state was working on milestone. Um, I don't know if this one's new or if that's if that's um, been existing. Do you all know? New. It's new. That one is new? Definitely. Okay. Definitely new. I think it was part of the sign campaign that happened. Gotcha, okay. Maybe if they can move that crosswalk sign over further up or, but that's exactly where you all are talking about putting the sign, correct? Yep. There's a uh, land bank post right near there too. I noticed the other day, uh, I think just off the road. They must own a little strip of land. They may, they may own one of these down here. Um, is this Sconset Trust at all? Did they own uh, something over here? I can answer that. Uh, where your arrow is, Holly, is uh, the water company. Um, okay. and, uh, just to the right of it, where it says off, that's Sconset Trust. Right here. Okay. Yeah. That's the old ball field where your arrow is. That's right. That's right over here. Okay. So if this is town land, centrally, water company, yeah. that would be easier, I would think, to mm -hmm. require permission to put the sign versus any public or private land. So... That's good. Yeah. Do you all have any other concerns as far as the sign itself? It sounded like you, you all were in a, well, from the two comments that I received, um, an agreement to have the sign look exactly like this one, not Ex on posts. Yep, perfect. Okay. Yes, I agree. Angus or Caroline, uh, how do you feel? Yes. Oh, I okay. My comment. I made it, uh, Mr. Chairman. Oh, yay, Clement. Yay, so. Thank you. The chair notes the arrival of Clement Durkis. Thank you so much. Okay, Holly, so I guess uh, we, uh, we all feel that um, we'd like to see the sign on the right-hand side of the road as opposed to in the triangle. I believe Caroline has some comments. We can barely hear you, Caroline. Um, I don't understand why, A, we need a sign. And I don't understand why the sign would be there when Sconset starts near the, according to Rob's new map, way <laughs> back. Why, why do we need a sign at all? And that was what I'd sent to Clement. I had proposed a sign when I was involved with the Sconset Trust. And the, uh, the people who were farther down the road, meaning back toward Dean Hill, were very upset because they considered themselves Sconset. I, I just don't understand why we need a sign at all. 
Caroline, I can speak to that a little bit because as you see, I signed the letter. This yeah. is um, the Civic Association and Lynn Filipski. They think there's some confusion about whether you go left or go straight for the bikers mostly uh, because we discussed if you want to do it for the cars, you have to put it way out um, where the cars have enough time to react. But for the bikers, they felt it could be at the end of the bike path and um, that they, they feel that there are two entrances to Sconset and we have the one sign right here at my house, which is right at Coffin Street and Sconset actually begins uh, way back at maybe the golf course. Um, so it's not exactly a welcome to Sconset sign, but it's more of a directional sign to say, go straight to the center of town as opposed to taking New Street or Coffin Street. So that is the feeling about the placement of the sign. Good explanation. If I could add on that point is, um, or both of them is, does it make more sense to have Village Center instead of Sconset because you're already in Sconset? Yeah, except that, ex I'm sorry, this is Mary. Uh, my feeling about Village Center, while it, it is apt, um, is it's not in keeping with anything else we have elsewhere on the island. I mean, if you're in, a, in a, you know, an Italian village or approaching an Italian vi village, you always see those signs that are of the city. Um, but we, in Scot we on Nantucket have always identified with the signs configured as the one uh, outside of Clements is configured. So I think there's a tradition to maintain mm -hmm. or a precedent, shall we say. Just plain devil's advocate there. No, no, it was good. It was a good point. Yeah, hi, this is Rob. We could, um, we could pull up that crosswalk sign and use the same hole for the Sconset sign. <laughs> <laughs> So the general feeling is to, if there's one at all, is to put it on the right, on the right hand side. Yes. Along the yeah. way it is at the sanctity entrance. Yeah. I have a design like that. Yep. Like that. And have the arrow maybe straight versus on an angle. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Um, yes, please. Yeah. She's Definitely. really getting into details now. I was just following the arrow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Great. All right. I, I will pass those on. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, under old business, mm -hmm. we have uh, 22 Canterbury Lane. Yes, and likewise, this was on last week's agenda. Did receive a couple of comments via email, so thank you. Let's see. Okay. This last was before the HDC in October. Yeah. There you go. Wow. Let's see. So um, previously, um, you had mentioned that it was very big, massive, looks like a hotel, uh, uh, no roof walk without a chimney, not historically accurate, uh, very boastful. Oh, yeah. Middle's walk is shameful. Uh, separate the three windows and the second floor gable. The front door doesn't look right. Um, they came back to the HDC in well, actually November, it looks like they were in the, in the HDC. Um, 
And there was comments about, you know, pick exactly that, pick a style. Um, there's comment about the side lights on the flanking in the front door, um, that the right elevation was strange, too funky. Um, on the front, the sides are strange. Um, the left ex is, um, I don't know why they've revised that, so that's good. And then there was a comment of, uh, also about um, not liking the left step down, uh, don't like the right hip gambrel, and then um, asking for more trim. So it looks like that's what they've provided. Looks better. Uh, I have a, it's Rob, I just have a, a general question about, we'll start with the chimneys. Uh, are those actual fireplaces or are they just putting chimneys up so they can justify the, the roof walk? Uh, just a question. Yeah, let's look. Um, that's first floor. I doesn't look like it. It looks like they're. Yeah. I think they're faux. I don't see, unless I'm missing it in the floor plan. I don't see it in the floor plan either. It's it. I'll just make another comment. It's this the these revisions are kind of hard to see because the 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 changes aren't. Oh, I okay. I I'm seeing the clouding now. I didn't see the clouding before. Where they've made changes. And there are plenty of photos um, in the packet to, to give a neighborhood context, which is obviously very helpful to show what, what's out there. All the different. I was just looking at the context photos and, and nothing appears to be this scale um, in all those. And I, I would have assumed that the context photos would have would have gotten the closest possible to this scale, um, you know, to show, to back up its uh, appropriateness. Yeah. So with that being said, it, it seems to be out of, um, out of its, context. I do appreciate the um, revisions that have been made. They all seem to have, except for the overall scale, addressed the, 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 the nuanced differences. Except this is Clement. Um, well, they didn't, they've still got the widow's walk. Um, and could you explain something to me right over the front door in that gambrel are those three windows and I looked closely and it said curved jams. Does that mean the window is a uh, um, is bumped out. I mean. Uh, or does it, I don't know what it means is what I'm asking. On the second floor. Second floor, yeah. You say it says curved. It looks like J A M B S to me. Yeah. Uh, I... Can we see that on a uh, on a side view? Yeah. Does it stick out? I guess is my like a bay a bay window of sorts. Exactly. That's the word it I'm struggling it for. It does have a sort of an Adirondacky look now. And I would say in terms of mass, this is a lot like Occupy Sconset or uh, the, the North's house that actually got renamed, not Occupy Sconset. I was just looking on the, uh, oh. for the second floor plan, but there isn't one given which would show what's happening there. But I, um, a typical detail there would be that uh, there's, there's a, a rollover with an indented window. Uh, you know, sort of curving the end, but um, unfortunately, there isn't a plan to show it. Yeah, 
And can you also tell me, I mean, they bubbled the brick chimneys. What are they doing with them? Taking them away or? Well, my adding them. was, yeah, they didn't have chimneys before. And that was one of the reasons we thought the, um, the, uh, uh, the roof walk was. So they added the chimneys. Okay, thank you. But they but added, then, they're kind of short. Aren't they? But they didn't, didn't I, but didn't they add a fireplace, right? If you look at the floor plan, it, it seems to be that they're faux, correct? So they just added the chimneys in order to justify the widow's walk. <laughs> yeah, that's what it looks like. I can't get to the chim. You can't get to the chimney for up that long roof plane. The overall scale feels like, you know, one of the huge beach houses that's uh, like up on Lincoln Circle or something. You're right, it does. Yeah, this is Rob speaking. I, I, I just, it's, it, it just, the uh, scale is, feels way too massive. And I, rec and I recognize that the houses at the entrance to Canterbury are pretty massive. Um, but, I thought the whole thing about this redevelopment of Cannonbury was that they were going to be nice small houses. <laughs> Remember that? Remember that really? roof? <clears throat> yeah. That was what the developer had in mind. I'm sure. Yeah. Anybody have any comments on, on Can I, that? Um, yeah, I, I just have one more uh, piece of item is, is that um, I believe in the planning board's approval as the secondary dwellings were not allowed in this subdivision. That was part of the part of the agreement. Really? And, and so um, everybody's got them. Well, well, they've got garages, maybe with garages, guest houses yeah. on top, but I don't know that they have a full secondary dwelling. Right. So, right. So that's, so the secondary dwelling aspect gets absorbed into the main house. It's, it, it's just a theory. Mm. That, that's oh, why I we're seeing them. Yeah, okay. I can't remember exactly, because this was that, the subdivision was originally created in the 70s, and then it obviously stayed mostly vacant for a long time. And it wasn't until a couple of years ago when everything was kind of fixed up, if you will, as far as making sure all the requirements from the previous planning board approval from you know a long time ago was taken care of and any of the requirements from the, um, the planning board's consultant engineer and you know, all sorts of different things in order for the original developer to sell it to the current owners or most of the lots to the current owners. So there were some things that had to be clarified and I can't remember if that was one of them or not. So I apologize, I don't remember. Oh. Can I ask another um, kind of a, a picture question on the proposed side elevation right on the second floor, you've got three windows all attached together and then what looks like the bottom half of a door but it doesn't go anywhere or it doesn't, can't open because there's no porch there. You see what I mean right there? I don't know what that is. Oh yeah. It looks like a fixed window. Underneath the other window? It looks like it's a Dutch funky. door with a six light top. <laughs> I, yeah, it does actually. But the Dutch door doesn't go anywhere. I mean, they're not showing a porch there. Yeah, that, um, Holly, could you please make note of that, that whatever it is doesn't look right. Absolutely, right side. It almost looks like there's a little knob on the left side. Yeah, like you open it up. Like it's a fire escape with no 
I don't know. Watch that first step. They're going to throw out that ladder that you climb down. Yeah. And aren't these, I mean, as I remember, these columns are all kind of not in line. They're, they're a little odd, but maybe they fix that. And, and what have they done to this? They bubbled that. I don't know. I can't, without having the, you know, the first edition, I can't tell what's been done in the second edition. Uh, if you, Holly, if you zoom out a little bit, the, uh, the previous uh, submission is on the right hand side of that pane. Oh, it is? Oh, thank you. Yeah. Holly, can you can you zoom this oh, okay. out? Oh, there we go. Thank you. There it is. There it is. I see. Um, just for your information, I'm I'm looking at the uh, the front elevation uh, before and after, and they got rid of the two windows flanking the entryway. And ah. And put up, I guess in the place they put up those onion lamps. Oh, and they added side lights on the front door. The original did not have side lights. There were two windows where that where it's bubbled. All right. So Holly, I guess um, I I guess we could just say that the we feel that the scale is too imposing. Sounds good. Ready to move yeah. on? Uh, yeah, I, I think so. I, but I, I don't, and I really don't like the idea of fake chimneys. Right, Thank you. Anybody else have any comments on this application? Um, Rob? Yeah. So if you say no chimneys, the comment before was that there's a roof walk, but no chimneys. So now they've right. the chimneys, and now you're saying take the chimneys away. Are we saying no roof walk? Yes. I don't think there's a reason for a roof walk down there. I don't either, but I, I just think we should be clear. Yes, thank you. help it a little bit. Uh, Holly, how long do yep. we have for our meeting today? Um, we typically have until um, 12, but I checked there's nobody else after us until this, later this afternoon. Okay. So if you I wanted just, to go a little bit over 12. I noticed we've got 11 applications and we're halfway through our yeah. meeting and we're on the second one. Um, do we, ha do you have any additional, and that's a good point, um, Angus, so thank you. We have uh, 28 Maine, 15 Beach, and five Blackfish, and I know that's what Chip, Chip is, is waiting on. Do we have any additional comments that you wanted to um, talk about on these? Um, so we can get to the newer ones. I don't know what you want to do, Mr. Chair. Okay, sorry, I'm 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 here. I'm just not totally focused. I'm having some computer stuff here. Um, no worries. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so we're done with this one. Twenty-two Canterbury. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, let's. Let's move on. I think, then. I think we could certainly pick it apart a lot more, but but yeah, 
given that it, yeah. Mr. <clears throat> All right. I would, uh, suggest that we um, look at the black fish since Chip's joined us. Uh, yes, that's that, that's fine with me if it's if it's good with everybody else. Let's do that then. We're going to go to Five Blackfish Lane. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me okay? This is Chip. Loud and clear, Chip. Thank you. Excellent. Hey, happy uh, winter solstice to everyone. You. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Too bad we're not going to see the conjunction. I know. Oh I know. God. Oh, well. All we can do is all we can do. <laughs> okay. Shall I uh, do a overview? Please, yes. Go ahead. Okay. So what we're looking at here is a proposal for the guest house uh, for five blackfish. Uh, I don't know if the uh, if, if you might recall we looked at this some time ago, and then originally there was a one-story design uh, for this, which uh, the Scotts Advisory Board was uh, felt uh, was very nice. Uh, there was someone even I think had a comment that they said that they, they could live in it or something. But because of uh, uh, some other changes, we ended up changing it to a two-story proposal. At, and I believe that the Scotts Advisory Board uh, did not like the second, uh, the two-story option, uh, and certainly the HDC was not very keen on the two-story option. So we have gone back to a one-story, and in fact, it's even smaller than the original one-story uh, proposal that you had seen some time ago. So as you can see in these drawings, it's a very simple one-story, very small, I don't remember how many square feet, but pretty small. Uh, and it sits on the very back of the lot as well. So that is my presentation. Thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you, Chip. Uh, anybody have any immediate comments? It looks... Um, uh, I don't have any issues with it. Yeah, uh, thank you, Angus. Uh, Caroline? No, no issue. No okay, concerns. Mary Lathrop? Will? No concerns. Thank you, Clement? Yeah, I like it. Yeah, and I feel the same. Perfect. Okay, no thank concerns. you, Chip. Absolutely. And, uh, we also have today a look at the proposed uh, pool cabana. Um, again, it's been some time since you looked at it originally. Um, and you can see where it's situated. So it's situated uh, about three quarters of the way back on the lot behind the main house. Uh, the original proposal um, had, uh, was proposing a, uh, like a Dutch lap for the siding and an integrated uh, column detail at the rear wall. Um, I can't remember what your comments were, but I do know that the HCC felt that those elements were a little too uh, formal, uh, having the change in siding and the integrated columns. So uh, in this uh, iteration, we have uh, changed the proposed siding to match the rest of the structures a natural white cedar, and we removed the integrated uh, column look that we had on the rear. No, in my mind, this this is Clement. This is this is a lot better simplified. I still don't understand what you, what the purpose of it is, but that's up to the owners, not me. Uh, this is Caroline. I have a question. Where where are the mechanicals? The uh, would you like me to ask that. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Chip. Yes. So the mechanicals, the pool equipment is currently anticipated to be behind the guest house uh, in a fenced and landscaped area. We, aren't, we don't have that, uh, we could show in the site plan, we don't have it indicated yet because 
we still need all of that to be designed and then that would be a separate application but you, yeah right there you can see there's an outdoor shower behind there so we were uh we will our current intent is to put the equipment there in a fenced in and landscaped area so you're not seeing a bit around the cabana okay thank you and pre mr chair previously when you all looked at it um I believe, let's see. I don't know if you, I don't think you all had that many comments on it. Yeah, you didn't have many comments on it. I don't think it's going to be seen, but if it were, I, don't, I really don't have any issues with it. Yeah, it's very far off the road, too. Perfect. All right. Good to go um, on this one. Perfect. I think we're good. Thanks, Chip. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Everyone have Thanks, a Chip. beautiful remainder of the day and holiday ahead. Thank you. You do. Thanks, you too. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Uh, are we going to uh, go Mr. back? Mr. Chair, if you yeah. Yes. If you wanted to go back to twenty-eight main. Um, Yes, the demo move off shed, I think, is more important, but I think you'll also see that the pool too itself is a lot more simpler than you grab that too. All right. All right. Well, let's do the uh, let's do the pool first and um, <clears throat> uh, I watched the HGC's meeting about this and they were inches away from denying it based on our yeah. comments and their feelings as well about having a swimming, you know, swimming pool problem. And there are, as you'll see with this application, they've provided us with all the pools in the area and they say it's going to be screened enough. Uh, and I do note that in this application, they've, uh, removed all the flagstone that had previously been around it that took up pretty much all of the backyard. Yeah, Holly's got it on that page. On, over on the right, you can see all the hardscape around the pool. And then on the left, they've come back to the lawn. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's, that was the option they gave the applicant, they, the HDC. And I would say that, you know, we're, I know how we feel about swimming pools and, um, but as far as the hardscaping and everything goes, this is a vast improvement. Caroline? Yep. Where is the, um, the equipment? You know, the noise, the um, condensers, or whatever you call them. I believe they're still slated for the southwest corner behind the shed. There's an arrow that points oh, to it. Right here. Mm -hmm. Pool equipment. Okay. I'm happy to read my comments. I, uh, Holly, are we going to, um, well, our, the, the comments that we wrote because we didn't have a quorum last week, will they? Yes. Will they yes. still be read at the meeting? Yes. So I have your comment. I received comments via email from you, Clement and um, Mary, and you said you, you appreciate the reduction in the excessive hardscaping, but still changes rural character of this property in the historic core of Sconset Village. Uh, Clement, the pool and the rear addition covered the entire lot, duly noted. And Mary, advocate for as little hardscaping as possible in keeping with the simplicity and rural character of the neighborhood. And I think you, you guys are, are on the same page and I think the HTC has um, also grasped that as well, that I think everybody's been used to this area, especially this side of Main Street being very rural in nature and to retain that as much as possible. So yes, I will, to answer your question, uh, Angus, I will read those into the record. Okay, great. 
Uh, all right, so can we move on to the demo move off? Well, well, and of course, in this design, the shed is gone. So, is it is it is it true? This is Mary. That the um, hit, that the artists association is going to take the cottage and recreate it as a painted lady. That's what the HDC was told by Emeritus that the um, art association was interested in taking this. Yes. Well, and they've come back providing that, photographs of the interior. Okay, so that uh, I mean, I'm I'm okay with allowing move off. I'm not okay with allowing demo. Um, and you know, it's kind of like we went through this before on Beach Street, where well, they were going to move it off and so on and so forth. And that was not a historic building. This is, and I think we really need to hold the line here and say, yeah, if you're going to repurpose it, fine. But I don't yeah, know. thank you, Mary. Th uh, thank you, Mary. And I, uh, I, I feel the same way. And I, uh, I'm going to ask each member if uh, how they feel about it, so we can get that on the record. Uh, Carolyn, what what are your thoughts? I think we need to know where it's going. I absolutely think it should be safe. And not, thank not you. something where maybe they're interested, but where is it going? Yep. Okay, thank you. Angus? Just to make it concise, I'll just read the comments that I wrote and I guess they'll get read at the, the HCC meeting. But um, I uh, appreciate the, um, the photo. So I said, thank you for including such great photos, especially from underneath. The interior framing size and spacing, sheathing, flooring, subflooring, and floor framing are all consistent with nearly all the 1880s structures I've had the pleasure of working on in Sconset. So I'm, I'm pretty convinced that this is of that age. Um, the historic shed contributes to this rural landscape and would be a shame to move, but by no means is demolition appropriate. That's all. Good. And I have that down. Thank you, Angus. Uh, and Thank you for the uh, your sort of innate research. <laughs> it is a gorgeous little building. Uh, Clement? I, I can't remember what I said, but I, I'm against demolishing it. Uh, okay, thank you. Clement, you said the shed should be saved either on site or moved, but not demolished. Yeah. Thanks, and Holly. Thanks and and uh, hi, it's Rob and and I agree that this is a keeper and should not be demolished. It's a it's its own little gem. Okay, moving along. So, Mr. Chair, the next one, uh, fifteen Beach Street. I will tell you that. Um, um, Joe will not be here today, but the change is, I believe, a drop in six inches. Um, yeah. It's based on comments from you all and uh, the HDC. Yes. So, so the drop, drop in six inches brings it down to 23.6 or brings it down to 22? 23. Okay. And they I lowered, believe. lowered the plate. Twenty three even. Okay, I I know my comment when I when I wrote in last week was um, that that I was uh, disappointed in the representation of Ten Beach Street as a second dwelling. Ten Beach would be the little shotgun across the street, which the Wilner family accessed uh, this summer and has tried to create a second dwelling by adding a second story to that house. Actually, they wanted to obliterate the house, but we didn't allow that. So they're just adding a second story. And now they're saying, oh, well, uh, that's a second dwelling and it's only 22 feet. And so, you know, a primary dwelling, which is what 15 is going to be, should be 
should be, be allowed the extra foot. That is so disingenuous. I'm really disappointed in that representation. Uh, also, thank you, Mary. Uh, with this application, I'm looking at my other computer here. Um, Joe provided a series of photographs of other buildings in the neighborhood in Codfish Park and <clears throat> 23, six, 24 feet, 24, 23, uh, he included the 25 foot Dory barn, but- uh, Which doesn't yeah, exist. Which does not exist, correct. Um, well, you know, it's, let me, let me just ask the panel person by person. Uh, I'm really sorry. I'm just having some really awful computer problems. Anyway, uh, Caroline, could I, could I get your, uh, your view on this? That's the question. What yep. What's the height of the original Santos house that's on this property? Wow. The chair is this mm. Oh, that was about 17 feet. The workshop? Yeah, it was a it was a workshop along, along the road, you know, at, along the bank road. It shares this property. Oh, oh, the the house that's going to become the secondary house, even though it has more bedrooms. Right. <laughs> this becomes the primary residence. Right. This one bedroom house becomes the primary, and the house that housed the Santos family is the secondary dwelling. Um, I, it's, That's it's a good short. question. I don't know. It's short. It's not, I mean, it's a one story <laughs> house, is it? No, it's two story. Is it? Mm -hmm. to go. The one that's on the corner. Yeah. This one that's on the corner yeah. of Bank and Beach. That's two story. We should see a picture of it in this submission, shouldn't we? I would agree. Instead of this blue rectangle, I don't understand what that means, but. Uh, this is Rob. I'm, I'm just taking a quick look on the, on the uh, property card on the town website. Hang on one sec. Yeah, the original Santos house is on the corner there is a, it's a story and a half. And so how high is that, Rob? But I, so I can't really tell. I mean, it's, it could be 20 feet. The topography kind of goes up they are so the house feels taller uh yeah just because it's elevated santos house yes yes yeah this house is def definitely taller than the santos house and i and, and i know that the hdc is is looking for 22 feet they were very some yep. strong, some strong comments about it last week. Bill Welch, yeah, I, I'm, I'm a 22 foot preference. <clears throat> yep. Here it is. It's a, uh, the 22 structure at Penn is a secondary dwelling. So I would assume you all would want to see this shorter. Holly, I think that's a fair, yes, uh, I would agree. And I, I, I think we can, we can stand by our parent board in this. Certainly no more than 22 feet. I mean, we have to, this is tough because we're going to keep getting these and um, you know, I, I think we have to hold our ground. Really noted.
if that's the consensus, okay. we could we can move on. I'm happy to read my comments uh, that I wrote in, uh, but again, they'll be read at the HDC anyway. So I don't know if you, if you guys yes. care to hear it. <laughs> I have them right here. Angus, if you would like to do that, please do. Um, okay, so the context to photos, you know, the, the, most of the structures in Codfish Park are, are, um, are low, one-story structures. Um, most of the two-story structures are, are new additions. So um, I'm just simply saying thank you for including context photos of the tallest structures in the area. All of these are of contemporary construction at heights and styles that have compromised the historic ca character of Codfish Park. This latest revised proposal isn't dissimilar from the first proposal, albeit reduced height that still is imposing to the corner at Beach and Bank Streets. The theme is conflicted, all the bells and whistles of a contemporary home, but with barn doors, no front porch, and as close to the road as zoning allows. The main gable forward exacerbates the height and setback issues. The two E doors uh, slash windows read as French doors on the facade of the house in conflict with the building with Nantucket in mind guidelines and, and inappropriate. That's all. Well done. That was really good. Thank you, Angus. Uh, and I'd like to nominate you as chairman of the Wisconsin Advisory. <laughs> smooth <laughs> great thank you everybody uh, ah. so this is the proposed shed at 26 new street i think we had ethan on but maybe he had to jump off Um, this, the existing structure that's there, I saw that it was built in 1960 Just to give some context of this structure here. Yep. No photos, just that. Okay. So that's the proposal right before you. Looks like it's going in the back behind the house, which is where it should be. It, it might actually provide some noise reduction and relief to the neighbors who have noted that because this is often a rental house, it, they tend to have uh, kind of loud gatherings outside in that particular location at night, um, thus keeping up the neighbors whose bedroom is directly above it. They've heard some very interesting stories, which they've dined out on. <laughs> Hi, sorry guys, Ethan Griffin here. Oh, good, thanks. Hi, Ethan. Ethan. Sorry, I'm just at the car dealership when I'm dropping on my car, so it's good timing. All right. Uh, Mr. Chair, this is Angus. I, I don't have any concerns about this shed. It's a nice looking shed. Okay, thank you. Uh, Caroline, I'm just going to poll everybody. Caroline? No comment. No concern. Okay. Mary Lathrop? No, no concern. Thank you. Angus has spoken. Uh, Clement? No concerns. Thank you. And the chair has no concerns. Excellent. Thank you all. <laughs> have a happy Thanks, Nathan. Sorry to hold you up. Okay. Seven packet drive. And I um I had to look up packet drive. I didn't realize we <laughs> had such a road. Yeah. <laughs> it, isn't that okay. off of Canterbury? Yeah, it's the second <laughs> it's the second right off Canterbury. Actually That's the why. first street to be developed down there. Thank you. 
screening. You're a fool. Mm -hmm. Add privet hedge with cedar arbor and gate. There's the cedar arbor. Okay. Where's the equipment? Can you see it? I think I heard Carolyn ask uh, yeah. Where's the about where, where the equipment's going. It's not indicating on the site plan. Um, maybe it's going to be with this future cabana. But I'll note that down. I wish We're not was seeing the pool, cabana. I don't have any concerns about it? No concerns, Angus. Thank you. I don't have any concerns. I've, it looks like it's pretty well screened and. No, this is Clement. My only concern is we're, we're not seeing the cabana, whatever that's going to look like. I guess that right. yeah, they will, they will have to bring that to us later. Yes, that will be a separate application. So now we're just COA. looking at the, yeah, we're just looking at the blue stone and the fire pit or whatever that is. Yes, pool and hardscape. Pool um, and hardscape. But with that, since, since um, Caroline has brought up exactly, which is a good comment, where exactly is the pool equipment, I will not um, put this on consent. Um, this will move forward for HDC's review and hopefully get that information out of the applicant too. Great. Excellent, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Holly, that's a great idea. Yep. We get, we do. I know it's not in our design book, but we like to think about the neighbors. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Probably the one of the oldest houses you're going to see on your agenda today. <laughs> Nathan Coffin, Eben Bernard House, from 1753 originally. Wow. You, you can talk to me. Hello. This is Nathan McMullen. Hi, okay. Nathan. Th thanks, Nathan. How are you? Proceed. Uh, good afternoon. Good morning. Um, Sarah O'Reilly recently purchased this property and she has some ideas for proposed improvements, including and starting with some landscape and some parking, which is what we're <laughs> here for today. Um, the parallel parking proposal here is because of a very narrow width of elbow lane at this point. She has a garage right off elbow lane that you can see Yes, yes, this second dwelling garage, but it's very hard to get in and it's not somewhere that she wants to park every time she gets out of the car. Um, and so the garage is very difficult to access. So she'd prefer to pull off more easily um, and uh, She's going to replace all of the existing privet. It's in bad shape. So this is starting this project is to replace all that privet. Um, you're seeing only part of it. The rest of it will move all the way west along the second dwelling as well. Please note in your package, you can see the 1998 site plan um, showing the parking for the second dwelling, which takes about 15 feet of privet itself to, um, it's a void, 
yeah, you can see that. And um, we, we're not sure. It could be part of the original zoning approval for a second dwelling. We're not sure about that. And this is an unusual lot in that it has this opportunity for a little bit of parallel parking. And so we hope that you will find your way to um, see this as a good proposal. Uh, please remember that the village, most of the village has very intense parallel parking along the streets and lanes in this area of Sconset, especially to the north of Ocean Avenue. Therefore, this parallel parking would not be unlike the parking along Broadway and Center Street, Shell Street, except those cars are on the road and partly on the road, and this one will allow her to pull completely off. Thank you. Mr. Chair, may I ask a question? Please go ahead and thank you, Ethan. So um, Nathan, is there this parking that's in front of the existing garage, which is noted up here, is that parking, I guess it would be right here. Is it's, that gonna it's be actually staying? The, I'm sorry to interrupt. It's actually part of the street. That's what's so, so oh, difficult okay. about getting into her garage. Okay. So this parking right here that's shown, really this is the street that's right here? Yes, it is, yes. Okay, um, I would just, I would just want to note that um, from a from a zoning perspective, it it seems to me that this would be your second curb cut, if you will. Um, so if you have not gone to the planning board, you're going to have to, because you already have access here. Right. If you're within, removing this artificial. access, then then you'd be fine from a zoning perspective. But if you're adding it here. Um, also, I believe parallel parking under the zoning bylaw requires um, a special permit. So you want you really want to look into that perspective. Yes, uh, very, very obviously good. from from the outside of HDC. We're starting Thank here you, with you. Yep, duly noted. But I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I think it's within fifty feet. Okay, uh, any, any comments? I'm gonna poll everybody, Caroline. I just have a long history with the property and I prefer it the way it is without parallel parking on a, on a very tricky little lane. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mary Lathrop, Will? I used to clean this house back in the 70s. Um, it's lovely. And I actually, I, so I would agree with Caroline, it's, it's a wonderful little property. Um, the problem is you've got Larson Park across the street. Uh, if anything, it seems to me that the owner is being, um, the new owner is, is being um, a good neighbor in that she's taking care of her own parking away from, you know, the, the mess behind the market and, um, mm -hmm. and the you know, the, the Larson Park population and everything else. So I kind of applaud her for using her own property, house her own cars, as opposed to the rest of- Good, good point. Know, parking is a real problem down there. And so. Thank you, Mary. Uh, Angus? Uh, yeah, I, I I think uh, I'm not sure what the story is with the zoning, but I think having to ask for a special permission lets you know where where parallel parking stands um, in general with the the town. Um, it is unusual parking um, in Sconset. Um, parking is very limited, and the the parallel parking that happens, as uh, Nathan has pointed out, is on the street, it's not um, parking spaces. 
um, that are parallel in, in people's property. Um, right now there are cars on one side of that lane. Uh, and I, I think that the charm and the character of that lane changes when you have cars on both sides of the lane. Um, and so uh, it, uh, if parking were to happen there, I would much rather it see, be side by side and pull in straight, but I think they would end up with the same issue that they have with their existing parking and garage. Um, so I, I feel like it, um, it, it changes the character, but should be reduced if, if it's being considered. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is Rob. I'm, I'm ambivalent. Um, I, it's a great idea having your own parking. Uh, and I agree too that, you know, that's a congested little spot back there. Mm -hmm. um, but I also don't want to intrude too much on the character of that little lane. Uh, so like to say I'm ambivalent. Uh, I recognize that the uh, that garage is basic is almost useless as, as a garage space, um, but but that was a that was done years ago, <clears throat> and and a, it was a studio apartment that became a secondary dwelling at some point along the line. But anyway, um, that's not part of this application. So if it if it came if it comes to push and shove, I would I would guess that the you know, we have to live with our cars, so, and I like the idea of it having to go to the, the planning board, but, so those, those are just my thoughts. Hey, the, uh, um, Chairman, this is yeah. Clement. Oh, Clement, um, I didn't ask, yeah. Yeah, that's why I'm butting in. Um, Thank you. I think this is kind of, I mean, behind the market, maybe half of it is behind the market and half is where the, mm -hmm. where the park is. Um, and I'm, I know the market has big trucks that come in there to deliver. Um, I, I see problems with that. I, and I agree with Caroline and not changing the character of the lane. Um, I also appreciate that she's trying to find parking. It, it's a very bad conundrum, but Mm -hmm. But being back there with all the deliveries, delivery trucks, they might be blocked. And um, yeah, it's it's an issue. But I think you, you got to go through planning or zoning or somebody first. Mr. Chair, I, I also wanted to add for Nathan's benefit that um, looking at the the parking requirements for primary and secondary based on the zoning, which is there's a there's a chart in the zoning bylaw. Um, you may only be required to have one parking or one point something parking, but if it's less than two, um, you can also look at not having um, both full size parking spaces. It looks like you're you're putting on here two full size. You could look into doing maybe one full size and one um, compact size which is seven by 17 that's an option so they're just, already there are options abbreviated. There. they already okay. are abbreviated yes okay. couldn't see that okay okay thank, thank you. you thank you madam chair uh this is rob i wanted to uh, just uh ask Ethan if he is aware that they're getting ready to tear up that street yes we we are Yes, which is why, okay. why we thought this was an opportune time. Gotcha. All right. All right, thank you. Uh, any other comments? Great. Okay, Nathan, thank you very much. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks, Have a Nathan. good one. Have a good day. Yep, you too. Thank you. All right. 22 Starbuck. I don't think that's that, us. Is that I don't, it? I don't know where it is. <laughs> Let's see. It's, that's it's on Madigan. the agenda. The locust it's, plan doesn't help because all it does is show the street, but I think it's in Madigan. Yeah, it's um, 
it's, 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 map, it's, it's map number 60. Tax map number 60, so that's. Yep. So that was incorrectly put on the agenda. Got it. Great, thank you. We'll notate that. I got scared when I thought that. I thought that I was going to have to include that on our new map, but that's a long <laughs> way away. <laughs> you wanted it to expand. We're going all the way. The west. We're going. <laughs> go west, young man. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, uh, I sent a copy of the map to everybody just just to look at. We don't have to discuss it in, at at length at this time. Because we are we are running a little late, but uh, um, Holly, I sent you a copy, didn't I? Yes. Okay. Yes. And I just um, I don't know if if you can put it up. It it actually reads it it uh, reads better on its side, but that's okay. Um, so. I created this just from talking with other people of like uh, from the Wisconsin Trust. Thank you, Clement, and uh, the Civic Association and the sort of area plan. And so we went big and uh, basically it's up Hoogs Hollow Road all the way down to the Tom Nevers Pond. I included in, in the southern part, I included some of those Coast Guard properties. Actually, I included all of them. Uh, we don't know what's the disposition of that land is going to be, but should it be go to a, an agency of some kind? Uh, as we know, Low Beach Road is vastly visible, the landscape down there. So I just included them just because it's visible from a public way. Whichever way the disposition of the land goes, I figured if we're, while we're doing this, let's just do it. Rob, uh, Rob, does this, I was going to ask, does this yeah. match the area plan or does this expand a little bit? Um, well, to be honest with you, I haven't seen the area plan map. Uh, okay. I'll send I that have, to you. I have it, but I don't have it digitalized. So if you could send it to him digitally, that would be great. I've got it printed out. I don't know where. Yeah. Yes. So Clement sent me a black and white version of it, and I in turn requested a um, an actual copy of it from our GIS coordinator, yeah. who obviously during dur due to COVID, I have not actually seen him, but he's working from remotely, and he he emailed it to me. I thought I had sent it to everybody, but I will look and and send it again. Um, I believe it matches for the most part, but there may be some internal over here that yours expands a little bit more. Yep. Um, but at the very least, you know, from a staff's perspective, having it match an existing plan like the um, area plan out of the master plan makes sense. Yeah. So. I believe it does expand west some somewhat, but most of that is either golf course or um, so that would be, I, but I think that should be included, not that it's going to be developed, but just so it's all in our was kind of a straighter line from Hoyks Hollow down to uh, okay. Tom Nevers Pond. That makes right. sense. Makes total sense. And, what, uh, worries, what worries me is that those lots uh, north of uh, Lennox Way are yes. not included and they may be available for development at some point. So I think that they should be included in the plan. Yeah, great. I think I, uh, I, I didn't. Yes, I agree, and and I didn't put them in just because uh, it's not really a public way up there. But you never know that maybe they're going to ask the town to take it sometime. I mean, a lot of these roads may still be private, but um, mm -hmm. uh, I would say I would agree that we that we should include that area, uh, that that little rectangle. Uh, to the right of the wording where it says Lennox Way, that's Sconset Trust. Yes. Yep. And then to the left is Golf Club. That's Golf, Golf Club. Club. Yeah. And one of those triangles north of Lennox Way is Sconset Trust. Oh, that's right. Yep. The one that 
Yeah, so, the one that is uh, right in where it says way. Yep. Yes. Yep. And it might go a little higher too. I, I can't, I don't know. I think yeah. it does. Which map are we looking at? Is this the um, is this the one that you did, Rob, or is this the the town map of Sconset? This is uh, the uh, base map I used was the uh, the twenty twenty Nantucket entire island Nantucket zoning map, and I downloaded it and then uh, in Photoshop just grabbed a screen. I mean, you know, saved a portion of the map and. With my little select tool in Photoshop, I just clicked around on all the streets and then filled the area with the orange. And so it overlays all the other districts uh, and includes all the other districts. So that was generated right here in my basement. What do you think about um, just drawing a line from Hoyks Hollow over to Linux and calling it even? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We could just go s s straight down. Um, it, it, and let's y'all all get um, the copy of Holly's map because that is the. It'd be nice if we just had one map, and that's the Wisconsin area plan master map. I appreciate that. That one does not have, as I recall, all the zoning on it, and I really love having the zoning because I'm trying to study that more. The zoning issues, so. Um, I, a, somehow a combination of the one Holly's going to send everybody and the one Rob's put together would be terrific. Yeah. Good. Well, I, um, oh, I will I, send that again. Afford I, that I would be, I, I'd be happy when I get that to um, make the adjustments and s send the changes out and we can just keep at it. I thought it would be good just to talk about the area before we submit it to the um, HDC. Oh, I think okay. that's a that's a good idea. Thank you. Yes. So, okay. Thank you, everybody. Um, I guess uh, let's see. Can we skip uh, the Marconi? I, I think that was not supposed to be on, but that's all right. And do we need to talk about North Gully at this point? I don't think so. Not at this point, no, no. Okay. But let's just keep it on because I, I think there might be some future discussions. Okay. Uh, maybe the beginning of the year. So. All right. That's I fine. Make a motion to accept the comments. I'll second that. <clears throat> I'll second that, Mary. Thank you very much for that uh, proposal, Angus. All those in favor, Caroline. Yes. Thank you, Mary Lathrop. Will. Yes. Angus, I know is yes. Clement? Yes. And Rob agrees too. So that's unanimous. And I'll take a motion to adjourn if there are no other comments. So moved. Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Caroline? Yes. Mary Thank Lathrop. you. Uh, Mary Lathrop? Yes. Angus? Yes. Right. And Clement? Yes. Thank you. Thank Rob. you. Thank you. Unanimous. Thank you all. Thanks, everybody.